When you create a new Premiere Pro project, you have the option to specify what Adobe call the scratch disks. This is just another tab next to general here in the new project dialog box. Now there are four settings in this panel and essentially they're all controlling where new files should be created. First of all, we've got what's going to happen when you record video files then what's going to happen when we record audio files. In both cases, this is from tape. Whenever you see a reference to capture, that's Adobe talking about recording from tape. Effectively, your computer becomes a tape recorder. And then further down, we've got video previews and audio previews. Now, these are quite important because there will be occasions where you'll be working with some super fancy effects that really blow away all the previous special effects you've worked on, but in this occasion, the effect that you're working on is not a real-time one. It's not one that can play back live. You're going to have to get the machine to create a new video file that looks like the combination of your original media with the special effect. And when this happens, well, I mean, the, in practice, you just press a button and Premiere Pro gets on with it. But in the background, Premiere Pro is making a file, and that file is not given a particularly useful name. It's not put in a particularly accessible place. But that's not important because what you see inside your sequence is your original clip and there's a, a little green line along the top of the timeline panel. And that little green line tells you that you think you're looking at your original video clip, but what you're actually looking at is the render file, what I call the render file. Uh, Avid Media Composer calls these pre-computes and um, Edius from Grass Valley calls them renders. In the world of Adobe, they're called preview files. And there are separate video and separate audio preview files. Now, if you're working on something that's not a super high data rate, maybe something like uh, 35 or even 50 megabit XD Cam media or XD Cam EX, or perhaps if you're working with DSLR media, which is, a, I think, something, something very similar, the data rate isn't super high and it's not going to tax a reasonably fast hard drive that much. But if you're working with very high resolution media, perhaps you're working with red R3D files and it's really pushing your hard drives to the limit, you might want to separate out all of these four options onto separate drives on your computer. Now, I have to say, if you're at the point where you're producing content with something like a, a Red Epic, for perhaps, or one of the new 5K cameras, then you've probably got the time to do your research and check out the hardware that you need. In terms of setting up Premiere Pro, it's very, very simple. Each of these options allows you to choose same as project or documents or custom. And if you click browse, you can just browse to any location you want on your computer for each of them. If you leave this as the same as project option, the default option, it's actually pretty convenient. If your project file is stored on a reasonably fast hard drive, let's say you've got a, a dedicated media drive, then this means that all of your media, whether it's captured video or audio or video or audio previews, all of it is going to be inside the same location as your project file. And if you make a folder for your project file, which I encourage you to do, this makes it very, very easy to tidy things up when you finish the edit. All you have to do is delete the folder and you're done. So I encourage you to use same as project unless you have a particular reason to put these files somewhere else. You'll notice that Premiere Pro shows us the amount of available space on the drive that we currently have selected. It shows us the path that we've chosen right now. I'm on my G drive under assets. There's my O2 Premiere Pro projects folder that we're inside of. And down at the bottom, we actually have the same options as we do at the bottom of the general tab. We've got the option to choose a location and to specify a name. Everything on the new project dialog box, every single setting can be changed later. All of the settings in the main upper part of this can be changed from inside of Premiere Pro and the name and location of your project file can be changed either in macOS or in Windows. So that's just an overview of the scratch disk settings in Premiere Pro.